Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Ricardo Vinuesa. I'm an associate professor at KTH in Stockholm. And today I'm going to tell you uh, something about our work on multi-agent reinforcement learning for flow control. Uh, we're going to continue from some of our previous videos on deep reinforcement learning. Uh, if you remember, this is something that we presented uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, here, what I'm showing you is a setup for a multi-agent reinforcement learning uh, configuration to do a control of turbulence in a channel. So what you have here is the turbulent channel. It's an open channel, in fact. Um, the state is actually defined here. So we are sensing in the near world region at y plus 15 uh, the stringwise and world normal fluctuations. Uh, that's basically giving us the state that is going to be used by the reinforcement learning algorithm to decide the actions to be taken. Then based on this state, we also have a reward. And the reward is a, a calculation of the reduction of wall shear stress. So that's basically uh, defining how well we are doing with the actions in our system. And uh, another important thing is that in this multi-agent setup, each of these uh, blocks is an agent, but all of them share the same uh, parameters. So this multi-agent enables, in a way, a collaboration among agents such that all of them can globally achieve the best possible reward. Uh, each of them has a, a local uh, definition of the reward, and there is an overlap with neighboring uh, environments uh, to actually have uh, a bit of communication among them. But the idea is that uh, we have these uh, shared parameters, which really enable us to have the best possible outcome among all the possible agents. Now, uh, this uh, neural network agent over here is going to decide based on the state what are the best actions to take in terms of blowing and suction. So the actuation at the wall uh, such that we can define the best possible actuation to maximize the reward. So this is a work led by Luca Wastoni. In this uh, link, you can find the repository with all the codes, all the data. Uh, and in the second link, that's work led by uh, Colin Vignon. Uh, what you can find is a very good uh, review, a very comprehensive review of deep reinforcement learning for uh, flow control applications. Okay? So in these two links, you can get all the details and all the references uh, on this framework that we're using now to many different flow cases. What I wanted to talk about today is a nice example that illustrates the power of multi-agent reinforcement learning compared with single-agent reinforcement learning. Let me introduce the case. What we have is a relevant air convection problem. The bottom wall is hot and the top wall is actually cold. Uh, what we have here is natural convection. Uh, so we have two convection cells on this setup. Uh, and what we want to do is minimize the Nasa number, which is measuring the ratio of the convective uh, and the conductive heat transfer. So we want to minimize this uh, Nasa number in such a way that we can develop uh, applications relevant to well, possibly heat exchangers uh, and industrial settings. This is work also by Vignon and others. It's in published in Physics of Fluids. All the references and all the information is found in this uh, repository, all the codes as well. Uh, and what I want to illustrate is the power of what happens with single and with multi-agent reinforcement learning. In the bottom wall, you can see that we have a total of 10 segments. In these segments, what we can do is define the temperature. So we can, in the reinforcement learning setup, we're going to find a way to optimize the value of these uh, temperatures on these segments dynamically such that we can adapt to the flow and hopefully uh, minimize the Nasa number. Let's see how this is going to work in different setups. If we start with the uh, single agent reinforcement learning, this is what uh, basically what the algorithm is finding. In single agent reinforcement learning, each agent is trying to egoistically maximize the reward. And you can see these uh, red um, patterns at the bottom. These are regions of high temperature. So you can see that the various agents are trying to affect the flow. They're uh, finding localized regions of high temperature to try to uh, create an impact on these um, convection cells. And you can see that uh, despite uh, the best attempts of the agents, there is not a very, very significant effect on the, on the flow. And there is some effect. We will see uh, what this means in terms of heat transfer. But we see that there is not a very, very big impact. Now, let's pay close attention to what happens with multi-agent reinforcement learning in which all the agents are cooperating to achieve the best possible reward rather than individually uh, trying to maximize local rewards. 
So this is what happens. You can see that very quickly the agents are getting together and they're starting to very intensely increase the temperature in local regions of the flow. You can see that automatically on the uh, convection cell to the left there is a, a big impact. They're trying to work together to break, as you saw, the convection cell on the left in order to try to find a configuration that will hopefully lead to a lower heat transfer. So that's interesting. The agents are still working together. They're trying to reinforce the formation of this convection cell, this unique convection cell. The leftovers of the, of the second convection cell are almost gone. Uh, and what we can see now is a configuration with a single convection cell, which, by the way, is a stable flow configuration. So when we turn off the control, this results in um, a new flow state that doesn't return to the two uh, convection cell uh, setup. So this was actually something that we could discover thanks to the multi-agent reinforcement learning. We could really find a completely new control approach which uh, devises a way to reach the one convection cell configuration. Uh, and if we look at the results, what we see is that um, the yellow line here is the, um, is the baseline NASA number. Yeah, I'm plotting the NASA number as a, as a function of the episode number. This gray line is the reduction of the NASA number in the single agent. So it's a, a little bit below the yellow line, but there is not a big difference. And this white line over here, that's the NASA number with the multi-agent reinforcement learning. You can see that there is a drastic decrease of NASA number, a very, very uh, significantly improved configuration in terms of heat transfer, which really allows us to um, find completely new physics and in a way uh, designs that can be uh, better suited to certain industrial applications. So that's actually quite uh, interesting and uh, we can exploit the possibilities of multi-agent reinforcement learning in a number of setups and configurations. All the uh, codes uh, that I showed today can be found in this GitHub repository, so just feel free to use the QR code and access the data, access the codes, uh, feel free to contact us if you want to discuss. Um, and that's pretty much all for today. I told you a bit about multi-agent reinforcement learning. Uh, again, uh, in the rest of the um, channel, you can see many more videos on these related topics. Also, in my social media, you can access to be updated on our latest research. Uh, and I would like to thank both InfraVis and the KTH Visualization Studio for making this video possible, as well as the ERC, the European Research Council, for funding this research. Thank you very much and see you next time.